Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jupiter James and this is Astro Motivation where I awaken the astrologer within you and aim to give you a little inspiration and motivation per your unique placement within your birth chart. You know, I really do feel that before a time of iPhones and iPads and I this and I that, we were a culture and a society that were better able to look up at the stars and understand exactly where our dreams were and how to get them. And so if that sounds good to you, let's get into it. Today, I wanted to get into a topic of a little bit more of hope and positivity. Um, and that will be the blessings within your chart that ensure and show the guarantee of marriage and good partnership, okay? I've already done a video on the karmic relationships that you will gain in life per certain placements or how to find, you know, karmic placements within your chart. But this specific video is gonna be the blessings that you can see within marriage or in unions and partnerships and love in general, okay? Now, I do wanna preface this video by saying that if you do not have any of these placements or aspects within your chart, I beg you, do not take this as a sign that you will not gain marriage or that you will not achieve love in your life. I highly, highly recommend birth chart readings because it is only when you hire a licensed astrologer or a very experienced astrologer that they are able to synthesize the totality of your chart. I want you to use this video as more of a loose guide and an outline and a learning tool to show you where, you know, positivity is shown within love, you know, how we can associate planets and certain placements with the guarantee or the increase of chances for love, okay? So again, if throughout this video, you don't check the boxes or you don't see that, that does not mean that you won't get love. There are people out there that don't have the placements that I will list who through other placements within their chart and other things within their chart, they are the ones that get all the relationships. You understand? So again, do only take this like with a slight grain of salt, use this as a slight outline and a little bit of a learning tool and just for you to increase your knowledge and awareness on what to look for in the birth chart that will increase your chances for love, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first planet, the first thing that I will look for if I ever wanna see what the abundance of love will look like or marriage in a person's chart will be Jupiter, in the fifth house or the seventh house, okay? Now, this also means Jupiter by planet, right? Like a natal planet of Jupiter in the fifth or the seventh, or Jupiter ruled signs like Sagittarius in the seventh or the fifth. Now, if you have Pisces in the seventh or the fifth, this may make things a little bit shaky, so I won't consider that as a Jupiter ruled sign, but if you do have Jupiter in the seventh or the fifth house, this shows that this person will be someone that is very, very sociable, someone who goes on very many dates, someone who really is lucky and abundant within the area and the realm of dating. Now, if your Jupiter is in hard aspect to the eighth house, Scorpio, Capricorn, Saturn, or any of the negative or malefic placements, then this will be a little bit more of a challenge for you. It doesn't say that it won't guarantee it. It will just be a bit of a challenge, okay? So these are the things you have to consider, all right? But again, if you do have Jupiter in the fifth or Jupiter ruled signs in the fifth or seventh or Jupiter or, you know, in the seventh or fifth, this will show abundance, you know? It shows guarantee of marriage. It shows that you are someone that will be quite sociable and incredible your chances to bring love in okay so that is what this will show now the next one for me will be the moon okay so now the moon in the fifth or the seventh house will show and ensure that this is the type of energy that all the women want. Oh my God, the women that just want all the men to come to them and they just gonna attract and have, this is that placement, okay? Now, when you have moon in the fifth or moon in the seventh, you will be someone that has the luxury of people being attracted to you. You know, these are the people that can sit back, sip some, you know, uh, a drink at the bar and they just get people coming to them because you will glean a very positive and comforting aura. This is attractive energy. The moon is attractive energy, okay? And so this is what this will show. Moon ruled signs and moon 
the planet in the fifth or the seventh will give increase of chances and positivity within the dating realm. Now, the caveat, the trade-off to this energy is that when you have moon in the fifth or the seventh house, you will be someone that goes through quite a bit of changeability of partners, okay? So depending on who you're talking to, they'll say, yes, I get a lot of partners, but I can never tie them down or I'm always moving on to the next. But, you know, depending on who else you're talking to, they may say, hey, I'd rather take changeability of partners than to have none at all, right? And so in some people's eyes, that's a blessing. So this is kind of the, the double-edged sword with that, that moon ruled sign or uh, moon in the fifth or the seventh house, okay? So this is what this will show. Now, yeah, I think I touched that on that, all right? Now, also, again, I because I have to put it out there because I can already hear you guys right now. I've got moon in this and that house, but I don't have... If your moon is in hard aspect to the eighth house, Scorpio, Saturn, Capricorn, you know, this is gonna make it a little bit of a tougher time. It's gonna make it so that you wait. It's gonna be a little bit more chaotic or a little bit more of a workaround that you're gonna have to do for that if you have those signs and they're in those type of placements, okay? Again, this is why I say hire an astrologer because they'll be able to not only synthesize the full totality of your chart and let you know, hey, this is where you're going wrong, this is what you need to do, this is the remedy, this is what's happening, you know, because if we take little bits and pieces out, we'll, we'll never, really understand the why we'll never understand what's going on okay so yes moon in the fifth or seventh by sign or by uh by sign or by planet will ensure great chances at love okay and marriage all right and, and it will also bring you the type of partners that are very emotional and comforting okay now the second one that i will say would be venus again this is the quintessential placement any venus ruled signs like taurus or libra in the fifth or the seventh oh my god omg this person is going to be a social butterfly that's going to increase their chances to be out there to gain love they are also going to be quite attractive people are going to be attracted to their energy because you're putting a social sign that is ruled by venus in the social houses like seventh house and fifth house which then makes everything harmonious it pulls people in it pulls suitors and potential bachelors and partners in very easily okay now also the planet venus itself in the fifth or seventh can also give the same type of quality now again th this is that quintessential placement or that placement that every woman wants when they just want to kick back and have the man come to them and they're out minding their business and the guy can... this is that energy okay so the venus doesn't really have to lift the finger much in order for the 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 suitors to come and you know it's gonna be just like bees flocking to honey with this now again i have to preface it because i can hear people in my comments saying no i've got venus and it's not happening if your Venus is in Mars, or if it's in an Aries-driven sign, if it's in Pisces, if it's in Scorpio, if it's, if it's in Capricorn, or if it's next to Scor uh, Saturn, it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult, okay? It's gonna make it a little harder. It's gonna make it a little bit of a workaround, okay? It's not impossible. It's not saying no. It's just saying that there's gonna be some workaround. There's gonna be some karma. There's gonna, the universe is gonna make you work for it a little bit, okay? But aside from that if you have venus in the fifth or the seventh this will increase your chances and gives blessings within the social sphere in dating love and marriage okay because this is what venus rules right so putting it in the fifth or the seventh house will gain you that all right it will make it very very easy for you you will almost be someone that just gets it you understand what it takes and what needs to happen in order to get love to be pulled towards you okay you'll be that type of person that is at the bar and from the outside it will look as if people are just coming to you but you having venus or you know venus in the seventh or venus in the fifth you will understand that oh maybe you know you just got a wink at a guy you like you got a wink at the girl you like and that pulls them in you see to the outside world it'll look like oh you just show up at the bar and everyone's coming to you but you know 
social cues in order to get people to come to you. You understand? You understand because you'll just get it. The sign that rules sociability, the planet that rules sociability are in sociable houses. And so this will give that phenomenon where you know how to get people to come to you, okay? Just in your aura, your 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 presence will be at home, okay? So that is what you will see with that. Now, the second one. I mean, well, this is like the fourth or the fifth one. <laughs> the second one. The fifth one would well, the fourth one will be the sun. Okay, the sun in the fifth or the seventh, okay, will give this type of energy. All right, now, I ha whether it be by sign, so like Leo or, yeah, like Leo or the sun in fifth or seventh, this is going to make it very easy. Again, social butterfly energy. This is going to make people very attracted to you. This is going to ensure that your personality comes alive in the social scene. You know, you are able to relate with people. You are able to talk. You are able to gather people around you. You're quite the social butterfly. Now, again, I have to preface it again. Y'all going to get tired of me, but I have to preface it. Okay? This will only be that way if there are no malefic aspects or there are no hard aspects to that sun, okay, coming from a negative energy like the eighth house, Scorpio, Capricorn, Saturn, Mars even sometimes, you know, depending on what it is. Again, you will never quite know this unless you hire an astrologer to really synthesize the full totality of your chart and let you know what's going on. But aside from that, just for your knowledge purposes, sun, by sign or by planet in the fifth and seventh will gain possibility and increase your chances for positive marriage and love within your life okay now the last one just as a bonus one because i'm feeling nice <laughs> will be if any of these are by transit if any of the, the planets that i've just named any of the signs that i've named are transiting you know, if there's a big transit happening to those signs or within the fifth or seventh house, you will find that, you know, let's just say you don't have Venus. Let's say you don't have any of these placements, right? Let's even say you have malefic, because you guys know me, I don't believe in malefic or bad placements, but just for esoteric ways of speaking, I have to to say it that way, but let's just say you have not so favorable planets and you don't have any of these planets or combinations that I've named, right? Let's just say you have Venus moving through the fifth house. Venus is gonna give you a dose of that that power. It's gonna give you a dose or of that grace that would usually be in someone else's chart or within the energies and phenomena that I named. It will give you a dose of good luck in that area for the time being that Venus is in the fifth, okay? So if you do have Venus in the fifth, get out there. You understand? Move, uh, you know, get off the couch, go outside. This is what will help you do that. Be a little bit more sociable. Take that date that you've been putting off, right? Uh, same with Jupiter, same with Moon, same with, um, you know, Jupiter going through the fifth or seventh can give you that same type of quality. It will give you blessings in that area, okay? So that was my video. I really, really, really do hope that this helped you. Again, if you don't have these placements, it is not saying that you will never be married or that you won't be married. These are just the, like when someone asks me right off the top of my head, you know, and they're like, oh, what ensures the, a guarantee of marriage, this is what I would, you know, immediately try to look for, right? Right off the bat, front facing, without using too much brain power, right? Without using too much intuitive knowledge. I would just look for those things right on the paper, right? Or within the birth chart. But being an astrologer, you have to dig deeper than what's there, right? Like sometimes things can be missing. Sometimes these energies can be hidden, right? So that's what I'm saying. It doesn't not say that you won't be married if you don't have these signs or that you won't get a partner or that love is always going to be hard. There's always workarounds. There's always exceptions to the rule. And it just requires you to find the right person that can let you know what's going on for you. Okay. So I really, really do hope that you enjoyed this video. I really do hope that you got some good clarity out of this and some knowledge out of this. And I am wishing you all the best. Okay. Have a great day. Bye.